Hello everyone, welcome back to the 3D CAD Homeschool. Uh, we are at lesson number 10 and in the third lesson for modeling this Byzantine architecture. Um, as we said in the previous lesson, we are going to do now model this dome. Um, this is actually very interesting, I'm excited to show this. From a beginner's perspective, if you look at this and you think about how can I create, create this, mostly about these kind of um, ribbons that um, revolves around the object. How can I create an object like this? Um, this looks quite complex. So I want to show you actually not only one way to do it, but actually three ways how this could be done. Uh, I will start first by showing a basic way to create this basic shape using a basic shape because it's a, I think it's a general good practice. If you have anything that looks like geometrical, uh, you're usually better off using simple geometric shapes and reshaping them. So I will start by first creating, using this looks like a sphere, not a perfect sphere, but it looks like a stretched sphere. So I'll start by creating a sphere and uh, copying, trying to align it and get this basic shape and then we'll create the, the other stuff. There's another reason also for that, I'll start doing that way because kind of keeping with the theme we had before in the last three videos, I've introduced different ways of from tracing an image to tracing a top of a 3D object to uh, kind of um, reverse engineering using a 3D object, what we used for these pillars. So now I want to show you also how we can actually use this to trace this. So without further ado, let's get started. I'll go to a sphere and I'll keep the basic settings for now. Um, I have a horizontal segment. I think that's changed what I've changed. It's not default. That's basically 32 because if I want to select later every second, this will give me 16 um, to keeping up with the same amount we did before, if I remember correctly. And I'm going to simply finalize this. I'm going to move it up to put it onto position onto this so I can start kind of, we'll start then doing it, but I need to be able to see. So I'm going to change the color to, let's say this. And I'm going to change the opacity from the other object, make it a little bit opaque, make it opacity 50 so I can see through what's happening. And now I'm going to go back to this object. So, but before I do anything, I forgot to do something. I have to cut out. I actually need only half of the sphere. So I'm going to go to our friendly cube selection and I'm going to move from the top by 50. And that's basically 50 units if I have the size or if I go percentage wise. In this case, it's the same because the size is 100, so 50 will be the same. And I'm just finalizing it. And I'm simply going to click delete. So um, delete this part of it. But as you can see over here now, I'll need to isolate it for a minute so you can see. This doesn't have any volume over here. It doesn't have any thickness. And that's basically, first of all, we need thickness, but also there's no volume, this is not printable. So I'm going to add thickness. I'm going to use add thickness and I'm going to add thickness. I can have two options. I can add thickness from the inside and add volume inside or from the outside. So this, the inside would be in this case negative. So I'll make it negative 10. And why I say in this case, I'm not going to explain because this video is not about add thickness, but just to give a general idea that add thickness works also with normals. So if this is facing outwards, the normals, the positive side will be the opposite outside and negative would be inside. Uh, you may have different cases, different type of objects, or if we have flipped normals, which we briefly introduced in another video, uh, that may be changing the case, especially in profiles sometimes if you have different flipped normals. Uh, but yeah, in most cases of a basic object, the negative would be inside and the positive would be outside. So now we got this done. I'm going to unhide this object and Actually, I don't need to select them, just unhide them. And I'm going to start scaling, making this object look good. So uh, kind of similar. So I'm going to move it down first. Let's get it down something like this. And as you can see, if I would have taken a, a bigger sphere, you see I have no room scaling it over here. Over here on top, it's the same size. It's just that this is kind of stretched, elongated. So if I would make a bigger sphere, it wouldn't really give me the same results. I need it to be stretched. But now I need to stretch other axes. And if I start moving this, we'll move it just on one side. So I'll need to go to my symmetry. So if I move it in one, it will move it to the other side as well. And I'm going to kind of eyeball it something like this. And it looks okay. But as you can see over here, I get already my size and I know I need to have both sides the same. So I can go now and start stretching it in the side as well. But 
you know, actually, let's do it. But I actually don't need it because what I'm going to do is now, I'm just going to make it an even size, about the same size. I want them to be symmetrical as well. So I'm going to make it, let's say, 140. Or let's see how it looks like. So that looks like covering. So I could have made just one side and the other side just typed in the same side. So it doesn't matter. But this is basically, you see, we got the basic shape done uh, quite quick. But yeah, that wasn't the biggest challenge. So let's isolate this. And what we need to do now is to get this uh, ribbons going out. So there's a few ways we can do it. Um, I want to show you first the the Boolean way. I say Boolean, uh, you hear me use this often. This is Stitch and Scoop, it's called Boolean Tools. And this is a tool that very few people know how to do with this particular tool that's inside. That's why I'm, I'm excited to show it. So let's, let's get started. I'll take a basic cube. I'm just going to finalize it as it is because I'm going to scale it. And I'm going to scale it up. It doesn't matter what, it's just that it fits my needs, it's approximated, and I'm going to move it into position. You'll see in a minute what I'm doing, why. This doesn't really matter the size. And I'm doing something like this. So now I'm going to select both of these, and I'll go Stitch and Scoop. And if I do this tool, Intersection, it's a very powerful tool. If I click on Intersection, you see what this gives me. This gives me now this piece that I need. Um, I think it's a little bit too thick, I need to scale a little bit, but my other problem is that if I finalize it now, I'll lose the the sphere that we have done with. So I first, first need to make a copy of the sphere. So I need to make a copy of this, going to copy offset to make a copy in place. Um, just one copy, simple copy. And now I also want to scale this a little bit, make it smaller because this wouldn't be good the next step either it's, uh, it's too big i think this is about right and i'm selecting this as well and i go to stitch and scoop and i go to intersection and i'll finalize it so you can see this is done but it's overlapping because the copy object is exact same size so i just need to move it out a little bit to position it onto this object and as you can see we got this part you can see over here the image we got this part now it's positioned on top of this, uh, maybe I need to make it a little bit more in. Make sure I can just play around how much I want it to be sticking out. And now what I'm going to do is I need to make the revolutions. So I'm going to go again to my stitch and uh, copy offset, and I'm going to use the pivot, some tool we used before. And I'm going to make 15 copies. And let's make these copies. We have all of these copies, selecting the first one as well which we did before, same thing. I'm going to merge them. This is kind of repetitive tasks. I'm not explaining it too much because we explained in the previous videos. Somehow I, I put my first object on with an angle. Uh, I'm not sure what point I rotated that object, but it looks like I rotated it and they all have kind of an angle. Um, I'm going to finalize it now just to show you, but that's not, it should be done. should have rotated it back, but Nevertheless, just to show you, get out of the way, I'll move on to the next one, not take your time. And as you can see, we got this basically done the first way of doing it. But before I finalize this, I actually need to make another time a copy so I can show the other way of doing it. So let's make a copy of copy offset, a copy of this again, copy in place. And now let's select this and I'll make a union. And you see this overlapping, this is because it intersects this other object. So we got this one object away, so I can just isolate and see. You can see, oops, uh, isolate now, throw it. Okay, so you can see here this object is perfectly stitched together and it's fine. It's just I, I position them at an angle um, somehow. So let's hide them away and let's show this object. So now I'm going to show the second method, which is also using something we used before. I'm using um, loop selection and I'm going to select basic loops but I'm going to add a custom pattern to select one and skip one and like this okay and now we're going to go to extrusion all of the tools we used before and you see extrusion will give me kind of a, a something I, I don't like the way it it's projects over here so I'm going to use the vertex normals this will give me the idea and take extrusion 5 makes it about right and as you can see we got this basically corrected this way which probably is a much faster way 
the other object, if you looked, if you noticed, had also some a little bit extruded on on this parts as well. So I'm gonna redo this, reproduce this as well. Um, I can barely see how to make it up. So. You may wonder why I don't loop select, and the reason is because I can only loop select something that is flat. I mean, I don't want to, I can't skip patterns and loop select in such a way when I have these things over here, bumps over. Actually, I didn't test, maybe I could have, but I don't know. Um, so let's go extrusion, and over here I'm going to make it 2.5, so just a little bit less. And this for now, I think, looks exactly like the other object was used. I have mistakenly selected this part over here instead of this. Okay, so now I need to scale this down. Um, I need to scale this down, move this, move local transformations and move this down to the original place. You see, it's not that easy. Yeah, it is actually projected. Okay, it looks okay now. And looks okay. I moved it a little bit too much down. Could have probably used snap and snap it, but uh, oh, my local transformation is off. Let's say local transformations. And okay, I just mistakenly used there something, so I need to fix it. Okay, that should be fine. And now I need to fix this part wasn't extruded. I mistakenly clicked the wrong thing, I think. So maybe was it? Yeah, it looks like it was. I just took the other one also. Just added another thing. Okay, so it looks like we have it now ready. Uh, in this case, once I do this, I'll have to remove duplicates. So it snaps um, the one that I added. Actually, it doesn't anything to remove, so I have to adjust it a little bit more. I have to play with it with the snap. I can go to snap and snapping these vertices together. I kind of merge these vertices, snap them together. Um, so let's go what I did over here. I can collapse vertices onto this point. Okay, so now this is collapsed over here. Now I need to do the same thing over here and select these two vertices and whoops where are my friends here these two and go to snap and collapse vertices onto here here you go now I have it done and now once I collapse them I can I think the last one didn't collapse correctly so let's see it's probably not gonna remove it it removed one okay one one face one whatever so I think it, it, it's okay now so let's turn it off so okay so now you learned something new how to fix these things I didn't fix it perfectly so you learn how to not to do it <laughs> you have to uh, I should have done it the first time just collapse vertices and focus the collapse in the right way but not take extra time now just as long as you learn how this could be done um, so this basically looks the way it could be done before the third way is actually something I said the, on the video before. Let's hide this away. Um, I said before that I will be using loft. And loft may be an overkill in this particular example because you see how easy we could do it other ways. But nevertheless, I want to do that as well uh, to show that. Um, I'm going to set 100 again just to see this. And I'm going to look at the size actually just to get an idea what we have. So I'm going to go to polygon selection. And I'm going to select this polygon and look at scale, the size. We have a 140. I'll make it 150. This is not even. So I'll make 150. So I can hide back away this object. Um, so I'm going to go to my 3D sketch. And let's go. We'll draw an object over here with 32 segments. <coughs> um, Actually, I need over here number of edges. I think I'll need 63 edges. You see later why? Uh, because the way I'm going to then reduce them um, every uh, second skip. 
So you see, if I make a 75 radius, will give me a uh, 150 in size. So we got this done. Now let's take edge selection mode. And again, our friendly loop selection, we can stop using them, right? And I'm selecting this, but I'll make a custom pattern, which by the way, I haven't seen this tool anywhere in any other application. Um, I'm sure some have that, but I have not seen it yet. And this is simply amazing. You see what this can do. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to um, add thickness again. As I said before, itself kit is amazing that it reuses the same tools. This is like a total different tool. Um, it's called actually offset and other applications, this type of stuff. And it's just the same tool, it's just intuitive. You don't have to learn 20 different tools, just reuse them what you need. So in this case, I'm going to add a five. Let's preview. And yeah, so that's basically what I need. I'm going to add these edges over here. And I need to board you a little bit for an extra minute, I'm sorry, to select these to remove them. I uh, wish I would have had a loop selection solution for that, but I don't, unfortunately. I mean, there's other ways of doing it, but yeah, this is just easiest. Sometimes 3D modeling, uh, people work weeks, um, it's like any art. And spending an extra minute selecting these is not always the worst thing. But... Um, Sorry for your time. Okay, so here you go. We selected this, wasn't that bad. And now I'm going to make some copies of this. So I'm gonna make a copy uh, offset, our friendly copy offset again. I'm going to move up a copy by, let's say by 20, and I'm gonna scale it. I'll, I'm sure I'll have to adjust it, just eyeball it later, but I'm just gonna make it now a little bit. I'm gonna make the size minus, let's say 20, and minus 20 to make a copy and now I'm going to make another copy I'll move it up by um, let's move this up by 80 80 and let's make it minus we had a total of 150 size right so if it's 150 um, I want to leave the top by 20 and I've already made this smaller by 20, so it means 40, so it means I need to make it by minus 110, right? Minus 110, minus 110. Okay, so we have these done, these copies. And now Loft is works interestingly, it works in the direction the way you do it. So I have to, took like first selection, second selection, third selection. I'll show you soon how it could be done a different way, um, but this is working. So we got this shape basically. As I said, I'll need to adjust it. You see, we get this beautiful, nice lofted things. Um, I need to adjust my profile, probably move it up a little bit more to get the exact thing, or maybe add even a fourth profile to get the exact results I'm looking at. Um, I can also add a bevel. So let's say if I want to bevel it a little bit, adding some kind of, uh, this will bevel this. Yeah, it gives it an interesting look, but that's not what I expect over here. So let's make the bevel zero. I can also add rotations, but this depends on which profile. So let's say I'm going to twist the center profile and I'll rotate this by just a little bit, let's say a little bit more, by 20. Right, by 20, you see we can start twisting this. Let's uh, rotate actually the top profile the opposite way by negative 20 and see what we can get, start twisting this way. So you can start seeing we can do a lot of interesting stuff. Uh, we also have the option to fill. Now you see both are filled. So this is basically my fill settings is set to fill first and top. I can leave this open and just make a hole. I can also choose, you see now we have this inside looks the same, it looks the outside. If I do a closed loft, it fills it in a way kind of like add thickness. But in this particular case, because it's twisted, it kind of peeks out a little bit. Uh, it's not exactly what I was looking for to get. Um, but yeah, give it an interesting look the fill in some cases the fill will be completely flat in this case i think uh the way it's twisted it, it's kind of will create a bad geometry in this case so i wouldn't use the fill in this particular case um, but let's exit this out this is just playing and let's just try to get it a little bit more realistic what we're looking to get i'm not going to make it perfect because you can play it in your own time to make it perfect but just as long as you get the idea what it is but i'm also going to show you now the idea of first selecting the, the center one, then I'm going to the top one, and then I'm going to the bottom one. 
So now let's see what loft will give me. If I do something like this, uh, look what this is giving me. It gives me like two stages, okay, something like this. And this is actually quite interesting. And the reason is because loft, you give it instructions how you want it to work and it depends how you select them. So I selected first this and I told it, take this, then go here and then go down to the bottom. So basically this is what, what it, it did. But you can go over here. If you think about this was the center one, I need to position the center. I just drag it down to the center. And now you see we got what we expect. Um, now I'm going to try again without twisting to fill a closed loft. I think it should give me what I expect. Um, actually, it looks relatively okay now. The, it looks okay. It closed it over here. Uh, it's not completely flat. Maybe it is. Uh, it's not completely closed over here. It let me some edges. Sometimes the thickness gets more. Um, I think this depends on where the profile is offset. If I would add another profile on the bottom, it will actually give me what I expect. So let's take a look at it, how we'll do that. So I'm going to take another object in the bottom. Uh, let's create another profile. And I'm going to give, uh, go to my 3D sketch and I'll create another, let's go over here. I'll create another profile in the bottom and let's give it a radius of 75. Okay, actually should have made it a little bit smaller. See, I don't want this to intersect, otherwise this will give me the issues. So with a bad geometry, so you need to kind of make it smaller. So I'll make this to, let's say 140, even a little bit less. You see, this is still intersecting here. I'll make it 135 and now it should be fine. So now, if you see, instead of actually selecting all of them the way I did before, like in the order, first select this and then select this, um, there's also a, a way I can select all of them or key select, and or you can just go select all. Usually we'll select them in the order, I think. And now I do loft. So now, I think the last one was selected incorrectly, the bottom part. So it looks like something was selected incorrectly. Um, these two parts probably intersected incorrectly. So. Let's think about how I need to select them. So I need to select first this one, and then I need this one, then I need this one, and then I needed to go to this one. So these are in the same plane, so it's, I probably selected them wrong. Uh, looks like they didn't give me, okay, so now you see it gives me much better. And now if I'm choosing a closed loft, it also closed it much better. It's much better creases. I could probably still move around a little bit smaller to get a better result. But nevertheless, this gives me this nice results and you can play with the amount of details and, uh, you know, amount of profiles and basically get a better look and twisting it. But you can see how this could be done quite nicely. Um, okay, so moving on to how do we create the other part that we had over here, which is the bottom part. And let's isolate this. Oops. Um, isolate will work if you isolate um, again, it will show everything. So basically, the first time isolate, it will kind of, you see, it will hide everything except this. But if I isolate again, it will do the opposite and, and show everything. So, or show some of them. So basically, let's isolate this again. So I need now this part over here. So Using, um, you know, the general best practice, usually if you have geometric shapes, I would say take a cylinder and then add a torus over here. So take a cylinder, then take a torus and add them. Uh, but I want to show you another way because I want to teach you another idea about follow path, a tool we, I think we never used. So I'm going to start hiding this away. Let's just get an idea about the size, what size we have over here. And I look at this and let's go to scale. And the size here is 25.5 plus we have this probably like a five or so. So, so let's take a look. Let's let's take a, make this, I'll, I'll make it by 25, let's say. We'll average it for 25. And I'm going to hide it away again. So now let's go to a cylinder and I'm going to add the, let's see, restore defaults first. So let's go, the height would be by 25 and we are going to make the radius should be, I think we said 75, right? So 75 by 75. And now what I'm going to do is instead of adding 
a I can draw here to create a profile but I want to show you something else I think I used it before to copy to make a profile um, so I'm going to go to, again to my loop selection and I'm going to select this loop but without a custom pattern and I'm simply going to go to the copy offset to make a copy in, spa in place and now I have this profile and this is a new profile now what I'm going to do now is let's make this a R uh, R75 so we remember what this profile is about now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another small profile that I'm going to use with follow path so let's show you how to do this I'm unselecting this I don't want to draw on this profile again and I draw over here an other circle over here I can reduce it let's say just to 32 doesn't matter really oops 36 I entered for you um, okay so I'm going to add a circle doesn't really matter where I put it any place and I make the radius 2.5 a very small uh, circle and what I'm going to do is I select first of this first this profile and then I select the second profile and this is very important the order you select them you first select what you want to revolve around and then the second one what it should revolve around and then I go it's not revolve I call it revolve actually but it's called follow path what it wants to follow and then let's preview so basically this is what we got over here so you see we got a perfect look this gives me this and I'm going to finalize this so now what I want to do I want to make the bottom part copy but this is on the floor and I wouldn't be able to make a bottom part copy because socket wouldn't allow you to go out of the space so it will push it up and then it wouldn't be sticking out this way so I'm going to move selecting both of them and moving them up from the floor by 2.5 and now I can deselect this and go to my move tool and hold down the control key to make a copy and drag down a copy okay so now we have deselected I select all three and the stitch scoop is not available must be I have selected the profile so let's deselect the profile it's available and now let's make a union and here you go we have a union so let's unhide one of them let's see which one looks the best um, Actually, I'm not sure. So let's take this one. I'm not sure if that's the best one, but let's move this down. You can't see it's on top. We can just move it up over here, but let's move this down to Y um, about 30. I don't remember. Oops, I selected this one as well. I'm sorry. I have to deselect this one. Deselect this one. That's why this doesn't show. It showed zero because this was on the floor. Uh, y30, let's see, it's about right, let's look into it, it looks about right, I have to make sure it's intersecting, I think it's okay, it's hard to see with these color differences, but it looks okay, so let's select both of them, and let's do our friendly union, and here you go this is how you create these parts i actually selected the good one that i had added these pieces over here as well so this is how you do this now we are left to do over here a hole and uh, that should be quite easy actually you left this here didn't move it down enough and i left a hole over here so if you're adding a light to it this you have a nice way of picking out the light i can undo it move it back down but you get the point no reason to play around um this will show you actually interesting way that we can keep it this way but nevertheless um, I need to make the hole over here which should be quite easy just adding a cylinder and cutting them out using stitch and scoop so how about maybe we do it let's move this up a little bit on the floor so I have some space to put something over there and let's go with a cylinder of a height of 200 why not and uh, let's make a radius of 20 by 20 and like this and then select this stitch and scoop difference remove this and here you go here you have your hole cut out and this looks perfect so now i need to add just this top part um, which you see over here so let's go back to this okay so we created these parts you see we created this what i said before i added this one was kind of extruded half the thickness so we added this and uh, now we need to add this part um this i'll do in the next video hopefully i want to add another tool which is image to 3d 
uh, you can actually take images. Uh, this has some shape, which I didn't even know what this is and can reproduce. So I'm actually, looks like a little bit broken here and stuff. So I'm actually gonna replace this and maybe make my own design um, using Imagery 3D also, how you can actually convert images. And uh, yeah, we'll finish with this and then hopefully we can show some assembly and uh, 3D printing. So a few more videos, maybe one, two or three on, on this particular uh, design and then hopefully move on to other stuff. Um, okay, so I hope you enjoy it and until next time, um, stay safe and have a great day. Bye.